trading isn't about predictions. It's about preparation. And markets have been on fire lately. So let's dive into the charts and get ready for what's next. What is up, guys? What is up? Welcome back to another episode. Good to have you here. Good to have you back. So happy to see you. So happy to see you. Anyway, markets have been um, markets have been forgiving. Markets have been good to us the last week or so. Alts have been flying, and if I say alts, I mean uh, meme coins in general. Uh, meme coins specifically of course there's alts here and there xrp ripple litecoin as well uh which are people say dino coins but they're older than that they're fucking fossils so that's not great again i don't want to um, i don't like looking back to previous cycles and saying well you know the last time a uh, litecoin pumped uh, that was the end of end of the cycle end of the bull run something to keep in mind but i don't think it says a, a whole lot um so yeah this is going to be a uh, this is going to be an episode which is going to be mainly about crypto we're also going to be covering meme coins yes we are indeed sir um the uh, trader talk segment is going to cover the question uh, sh should you and do you trade uh, crypto uh, slash do you trade and should i buy meme coins uh, this is a question i was asked last thursday but we'll get to that later on um so i just want to cover one uh trade that isn't crypto right now which is the dollar canadian actually i'll cover i'll cover one or two more Fuck it, right um dollar canadian in general i um give a trade to shots before i skip it if the idea is still valid now dollar canadian looks really really good i've been over this uh more than once but if you look at the weekly dollar canadian it it's just it's really nice i like it when a chart is just clear there's clear structure even if you don't know anything about technical analysis don't know anything about trading if you look at this chart and your iq isn't 50 so there's there's a there's a, a a way for you to see patterns um pop right at you this is a moment where something like this could occur there's a huge rectangle right we got the low high low high clear clear rectangle clear levels that is nice i like that then within the rectangle within the uh, chart pattern we have an ascending triangle and we've been over the ascending triangle already, but it doesn't hurt to do so again. The ascending triangle is a triangle where the uh, upper bound boundary in this case is vertical, meaning uh, sellers step in at or about the same price, right? But buyers are willing to step in at higher prices. That is bullish because in general, most of the time, when uh, sellers start to exhaust at this level, uh, but buyers keep stepping in at higher prices, uh, we get a breakout, which has occurred now. Now, I was in this trade already um, when we broke out here somewhere, when we start see, started seeing an exception above this level. I got in, but I was stopped out again. Um, so this is the second uh, time I'm giving uh, this trade a shot. Uh, I'm protecting this trade tightly. My stop is below this candle here. Uh, previous week's low. Uh, I don't think we should trade back below there. Uh, this is a pretty nice hammer. My God, this is a pretty nice hammer as well. So I would be willing, possibly, I'm not sure yet, possibly to uh, buy or add to this trade at the high of the hammer which is almost around the same level as this naked level here. Um, so that is something I'm currently watching on the dollar Canadian, and I am currently in this trade. Now, then we have the, uh, we have coffee. 
I have tried shorting coffee uh, two times, uh, wasn't successful in doing so. Uh, but if you look at the monthly on coffee, uh, I like this candle here. It is both a uh, bullish engulfing candle and it is also a break out of um, at this high here. And uh, now we have already broken out of this high already uh, here, but then we got the immediate reverse reversal, sorry, immediate reversal. Um, so this is looking good, this monthly candle. Uh, I don't trade this diagonal. I just put it there uh, to keep in mind, but it, it's also breaking out of that. So all in all, it looks really good. Uh, and I don't see a reason why we won't retest this extreme high over here, which is a pretty big move of over 20%. Um, so I'm looking to position long in uh, coffee. Uh, I just haven't done so yet, but will be looking to do so uh, during the week to come. Now we have, uh, lastly, we have the Russell 2000 where we have the, uh, let me remove this for you. We have the uh, ascending triangle again. Um, we have the 3% um, level above the high of the uh, ascending triangle, which to me is the confirmed breakout, which is after this candle here. Um, seeing as it is a triangle, I would rather wait for a retest of the last high pre breakout which is um, uh, this level right here. I am not filled on this chart. Uh, no, I'm not. Um, actually, I, I said I'm not filled on this chart. I'm not filled uh, yet, sorry. Um, so yeah, if the trade gets away from me now, that is, that is, just, that is just tough luck. Uh, so if any of you don't know what front running is, Front running occurs mostly or more often in, in um, markets that are uh, traded a lot. Uh, front running, for instance, doesn't really occur on low cap meme coins. So if you only trade low cap meme coins, this isn't something that is uh, important to remember at all. But it, what happens in a lot of markets is, let's say people are bullish, uh, Russell 2000 in this case, but you can apply this to Bitcoin, Ether, wherever. Um, buyers are wanting to step in. Buyers are wanting to uh, get involved in this market, right? And I'm not. I'm not a genius. I'm not. A, uh, I'm not special. I'm not unique in any shape or form. Um, so I'm looking at this level. I'm thinking, look, I want to. I want to. I want to be a buyer here. But just as the, just like I'm thinking that, plenty of other people are thinking the exact same thing, right? Uh, so let's say this is just for for argument's sake. This is twenty three hundred. People go, well, look, I know a lot of people are wanting to probably get in at 2300, so I'm going to bid 2301 or 2302 or 2305. Um, so instead of uh, price hitting 2300 exactly, it'll bounce uh, uh, before that, a uh, reverse before that uh, at, say, 2305, because uh, buyers are uh, laddering their bids before the most obvious level. And that is what front running is. And front running does occur quite a lot. Uh, so you could always potentially bid like $1 above the most obvious price. Uh, one Or one pip, one price point above the most obvious price you're bidding. I in generally, I generally don't. But um, yeah, if this happens now, yeah, that's just, that's just tough luck, right? Um, so before we jump into the charts, before we go uh, um, uh, to the crypto, uh, the good stuff, I want to go over a quick market mastery. All right, so for market mastery today, we're covering, you know, we're covering um, the ATR based stop loss. Now, I did uh, go over trend trading uh, last week, or uh, rather quickly, right? Uh, and the potential uh, way to use uh, moving averages as your stop loss. Uh, again, let's say you have the four hour moving average and price is uh, trading up, right? And it keeps hitting uh, the EMA, which happens quite often. Once price closes through the moving average and finds acceptance, 
uh, that is a way to use the EMA as a potential uh, stop loss. I don't use that. I don't use it, but it was, it's kind of a basic thing, a basic lesson. So I figured I'd go over it really quick. Uh, but I do actually used, use the ATR based stop, but it's a little more complex, but slightly. Uh, but just because it's, it, it's kind of in line with last week's lesson, I think it's worth going over it. It, sorry. Uh, now you have seen me use ATR probably because it's on my one hour and four hour charts. Uh, what ATR is, ATR means average true range, which is the which is the actual range an asset has traded within um, the, 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 the uh, time it is based upon depends on the way you set it. Uh, in my case, it is, the la it is the average range of the last 20 days. And this is one of those indicators that actually work. People, traders actually respect the ATR levels. So oftentimes when price moves up, you'll see it actually reject at the ATR of the day. And if it goes down, it'll actually bounce at the ATR of the day. Obviously, th th this doesn't happen 100% of the time, but it is absolutely uh, an indicator that is worth looking at and worth adding to your charts. I've been using it for well over a year now, and it works really well. Um, the ATR-based stop loss is another indicator. You could just every day, let's say today is Sunday, right? This is the ATR low of today, of Sunday. So let's say you're in this trade, you could mark out this level, right? Which is the ATR of today. Then tomorrow on Monday, I don't want to see price go below the ATR of today. So that would be an ATR-based uh, stop. You could also use uh, another indicator, which is this one here, which kind of looks like a moving average. Uh, it's really simple, really easy to use. Um, so again, if you're on the, on the uh, day daily chart and you're in this trade, you've bought the breakout candle, let's say here, you don't want price to move back below ATR of the previous day. So if we get this price action here and we tomorrow we get a nuke down, you don't want to see price cross here. So every single day you just move your stop up to the ATR of the day, right? It's really that simple uh, because if price crosses the ATR of the day or the previous day, um, it means it has exceeded the average range of the uh, last or of the previous 20 days in, in, in my case which is an outlier, which is something you generally don't want to see. Uh, so the ATR based stop is an excellent and pretty simple to, to use tool to use. The reason I said it's complex is because it's, it's kind of easier and better to understand what ATR is. Uh, and if you're new to trading, I don't think you should spend a lot of time on ATR. Um, but if you've been doing this for slightly longer and if you're trading trends and if you're uh, in a trade, let's say you're in, I was in Doge um, uh, last week, right? which was a freaking monster trade. It was a very, very good trade. Um, let's say you're in this trade and it's trending up and you don't know where, where to put your stop because there's no real, um, there's no real uh, thrust candles uh, where you can put your stop below them and it's just up, 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 up. So the ATR based stop would be really, really uh, good to use. Now, if price goes below the highest point of the ATR here, I would have been, uh, I would, I would be stopped down. Uh, but I actually closed my, um, my trade up here manually. I know it wasn't at the exact target. I closed partial, I closed it partially here and the other one uh, was closed here. But again, ATR based stop, uh, you don't want to see price move back below this level here. So that is the ATR based uh, stop guys. All right, before we dive into the charts, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Exception. If you train on chain, you need to try Exception. I mean, we've all been there, trading on MetaMask, Phantom, Dex tools, or really any other Dex wallet, only to have swaps fail or get hit with ridiculous fees. And how great would it be to just set limit orders for any token, 
so you can buy the dips or take profits without constantly having to check the market. Imagine going to bed knowing you won't wake up to another coin that dropped 99% because you could not set a stop loss or missing out on huge profits because you didn't have a take profit order set. And that's where exception steps in. Now look, I've tried plenty of Telegram trading bots and let me just tell you, exception stands out. I wouldn't partner with them if I did not believe they were the best in the game. Plus, they share the revenue they earn through fees with holders of their token and traders using their bot. This bot streamlines on-chain trading and makes it so much more efficient, which is exactly what you need in fast-moving markets like these. Check them out using the link in the description below. All right, now. We're going to jump right into crypto, the good stuff. Oh, yeah. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Um, so, okay, this is the... I keep fucking doing this every single time. Holy shit. This is the huge weekly level still, 73.9. Again, if we get a retest of that level, there's two sides to this, right? It is it is the most obvious level, which would make it a very nice level to bid, uh, which I will most likely do. I mean, if you look at this chart, right, immediately this level just stands out the most. It's on a huge time. It's on a big time frame. Um, it's just important. It's an important level. However, if price keeps going up, there comes a point at which um, a, uh, a pullback, a correction, all the way back down here is just too significant, at which point you could probably say, look, I'm not bidding this level any longer because I don't want to see price drop all the way back down there. Um, in most cases, that will be the case when actual structure is built up. Now, if you're on the weekly, there's no real structure. This is structure, right? This is structure. Even this is structure, right? This is structure. This is structure. Okay, you get the fucking point. You're not, a, you're not an idiot. This isn't structure. This is just price moving up. If you go to a lower time frame, you'll see structure. Uh, but if you're trading the weekly, if you're trading the daily, you're looking at structure to be uh, created on that spe specific time frame. Uh, because if you go to a low enough time frame, you'll always find structure. But on the weekly, there is none. So if we get the, if we get the, um, the pullback now, somewhere around here, that'll be uh, biddable. But let's say we keep trending up, right? And then we get structure. And then we break out of the structure. And we get structure and we break out of the structure. I don't want to see price go all the way back down here. That makes no fucking sense, right? Because if, if we get structure build up here, a consolidation here, ideally, ideally the uh, top of that range, the top of that structure turns into new support. So if we would break down uh, from this structure back below, you want to see this hold. You, would, you don't want to see this go all the way back down. Again, in this case, right now, you could still bid, uh, but, but do be aware of the difference. A level, is, um, a level doesn't remain good. A, a level doesn't remain biddable forever. That is just not how it works. But for now, it still looks good if we get... Uh, the pullback to 73.9 i'm definitely a, a big buyer uh, for now i'm bidding slider pullbacks um right now i want to bid these two levels here we have the 82.4 level which i want to bid and we have 77.5 which i really want to uh, bid these are slight pullbacks uh, they are uh, last high pre-breakouts, especially this one I like more. There's no real structure here. This is more of a structure with a breakout, uh, which I prefer over this. Uh, but I'm bidding just both laddering into the uh, trade. Um, so yeah, that is Bitcoin right now. Usually uh, when Bitcoin uh, consolidates, when Bitcoin trades sideways, you get alts running, which has been the case for the last few days. Uh, which is pretty nice, but you got to be in those alts, right? So that is uh, that is Bitcoin for now. Then we have uh, Ether. Oh, and in case you didn't know what the conclusion was, it, it just looks good. Um, I mean, people are getting bearish at $90,000. 
for Christ's sake, guys, really we're at fucking $90,000 and you guys are bearish because we've retraced fucking 18 cents. Give me a break. But then we got Ether. I, I, I like this chart because it's really clear. It's very neat. Um, we've been over this, but I'll go over it again. We got the $2,800 $2, level. Uh, obvious support here. Then we get support turning into resistance over here. Oftentimes, it doesn't even get to 2800 meaning people are wanting to sell earlier, uh, which isn't a good look usually. However, buyers are stepping in at higher prices as well. So that kind of balances it out. Then we get this beautiful thrust candle uh, closing through previous resistance and then not being tested as support yet. Uh, I think we will get the retest, which will be a very good look, a very healthy look to the chart. Doesn't make it bearish at all. Uh, absolutely no reason to get bearish if we get the retest. To me, this is a really obvious level to bid with your stop below this thrust candle here. Uh, not sure why it's lower. It should be here. Really, really nice level to play. Really nice invalidation. This is this is the level to bid on uh, on ETH and then uh, and then probably um, uh, trade it up to four thousand. You could say, look, Bitcoin is at all time highs. Why would you not trade Ether to new all time highs? Um, well, the reason for that is pretty uh, simple. I don't assume everything will just go back to new all time highs. Ether probably will. But to me, this is a new trade. If we manage to close above 4,000, get the retest, then I'll trade it up to uh, previous all-time highs. Uh, there's no reason for me to uh, immediately target uh, previous all-time highs when we have clear resistance to work with still over there. Now, this is different than Solana. Like, look at this market, right? I mean... If, if I mention a, a general concept, if I mention an idea, in this case, not trading it to previous all-time highs, uh, but trading it to the first uh, major resistance level, that doesn't apply to every single market every single time. Like here, it makes a lot less sense to trade it up until the previous all-time high. Like Ether, uh, Solana has been outperforming, uh, you could even potentially say, look, this is a giant cup and handle. I don't look at it that way, but you could. Uh, this chart is just looking looking way more bullish than, than, than this chart, right? I don't have to explain this to you. It just does. Um, for me, this isn't really a part of the structure. You could even call it a deviation, uh, which, it, which it isn't, but you could. Um, I see this as a uh, as a structure. This is a sideways price action over here. Um, people have been drawing it uh, like so, which is also possible. Uh, you could trade it. You could uh, look at it like this, right? This is also a, a possible uh, way to look at it, which would mean the breakout would have occurred here already. Uh, I haven't traded it this way. I wanted to be long at the breakout here, which I did, and I still am. Uh, Solana's looking really good. I got positioned yesterday uh, because I liked the way this was just finding acceptance above the breakout level. So my stop is right below this candle over here, which is a small thrust through the highs here. Um... I think having your stop around these lows here is a little too obvious. Uh, this could be a potential candle as well. I chose this one because it is slightly uh, less obvious. I think people have a lot of stops over here. Also on the four hour, there's a little structure building up. Uh, so I don't think having your stop there is uh, too smart. Um, however, on the other hand, like I just said, we have structure building up, right? So you don't want to see price trading through this structure anymore anyway. Um, and I'm looking to, to, um, uh, move my stop as well. And I'm actually looking to add to this trade. 
Again, we get structure building up here. Then we get the clear hourly thrust candle through the highs, meaning I want to add be, uh, be a buyer, add to the trade at the last high pre-breakout. Again, this is also a, uh, a good example where front running could occur. Many people, a lot of people are probably looking at this trade thinking I want to be a buyer of a retest of this level or this level and probably this level. So people are going to ladder in and probably uh, add their buys higher up. But that's okay. I'm positioned pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty well. So if I don't get the ad, that's okay. That's okay. For Solana, I'm targeting 300, 400, something around that area. So we'll see what we get. Uh, okay, I'm going to go over a few alts. Uh, I'm going to go over a few alts uh, before we jump into the memes. Um, there's a whole lot to cover, and I don't have um, all the time in the world. I have some time. So excuse me if I uh, go over charts quickly. Uh, but a whole lot of them look the same. So let me start off with a, a, a general idea first. Idea first, uh, let's take ETH5, for instance, right? And many, a lot of charts are looking like this, uh, where you have a rectangle on the bottom forming, which is a very, very reliable chart pattern. I've said this a thousand fucking times. It is a very reliable chart pattern. Um, chances of this breaking out and reaching targets are uh, way above uh 50% and the position of this um uh, of this uh, pattern is is important as well this could very well be a uh, accumulation bottom uh, uh bottoming structure um a lot of buyers are accumulating at the bottom so once we get the breakout out of the bottom uh things can move pretty quickly now the reason i have two uh, price lines uh, mapped on my chart is because what the first is uh, is the the level I consider to be the top of the rectangle and the second one is a, a level that is three percent above the top meaning if it is if it closes the day uh, three percent above the top of the rectangle that is a confirmed breakout to me uh, which is when I get interested in buying this market when price breaks out of a rectangle, I've said this last week, right? Price breaks out. There usually is no perfect retest to buy. So I don't wait for a retest. I wait for the break of confirmation and position. Does it sometimes happen that the day closes like this, like 40% up? It does. Do I then still buy? I do not. It's got to be a convincing close, but it doesn't, it cannot be a, a close that is really close to target right that makes no sense um so then i so then i just won't buy uh but don't you but won't you miss the trade then yes you will but that doesn't matter because there's a ton of opportunity always there's always opportunity guys always so this is a very clear uh rectangle my uh target would be to just um take or measure the height of the rectangle put it up now, as you can see, the target of the rectangle is higher than the level I marked. But as you can clearly see, the level I marked is a very big, very important, very obvious support resistance level. So I'd rather take um, the sure bet and close this trade at uh, 2.759, which I think it will hit if we close out of this uh, range. Now, there's a whole lot of charts that look like this. They've started accumulating started bottoming anywhere between June and August. So I'll notice, I'll, I'll, I'll mention a few of those as well. There's a lot of charts that look like this as well, where there's clearly an uptrend, right? Clearly an uptrend. But then ever so often, you get a very big thrust candle that looks bigger than the rest, right? Where just a, a, a big move has happened. Uh, I think this one is it. Uh, so you could potentially, and these trades work quite often, um, if you get structure forming, big thrust candle through the highs, you could be a buyer at the last high pre-breakout uh, with a stop below the thrust candle, which would be here. Uh, these trades work well, but it depends on the timing and the placement of the, of the thrust candle. 
um this this isn't a uh this isn't a uh class one or tier s s tier trade uh it's just something i wanted to uh to point out to you uh so let's just go over these pretty quickly ada man ada is fucking moving right holy shit look at this move this move is crazy um and the funny thing is so this is actually a, a really good example of how a um, rectangle can just move and never look back. Uh, this too is an example of a rectangle that has uh, started forming between June and August, what I just mentioned. Here you go, really clear. Then we get the breakout candle, right? I would have been a buyer. Um, the funny thing is I had no alert on for the breakout, so I completely missed this uh, chart. And it has subsequently moved almost a hundred percent, so that is too bad. But as you can see, no breakout, just fucking straight up, right? Just straight up. Uh, in all fairness, I would have closed the the trade at this level here anyway, um, so I wouldn't have been able to play this. Probably have would have played a retest of this, but uh, I'm not going to sit here and do a hindsight uh, hindsight trading. But this is a beautiful, beautiful example, and I think a lot of these uh, bottoming structures that I just mentioned can play out the same way. Uh, so you gotta be, you gotta be uh, um, on the lookout for these and um, uh, be able to uh, react, respond quickly. This is a uh, descending uh, triangle, which isn't usually uh, bullish. Uh, this is just a down only chart, so I would probably uh, um, see this break uh, down and then continue its uh, downside uh, but if it if it is able to break out of this then retest the uh, top of the uh, descending triangle I may be uh, a buyer I'll go yeah nothing special ape let me go over this real quick um, arb I'm not in this trade uh, but it looks uh, good. It looks it looks good. There's a whole lot of charts that look like this, where they just uh, break out, got the retest, and they're still above uh, above their previous resistance, right? So positioning into these markets is is I wouldn't say a no brainer um, because it doesn't guarantee you anything. But the the general market structure is is just it it just looks really good. It looks very very obvious, right? And um, if this is the if this is the uh, uh, breakout candle, the thrust candle, you can just always put your stop either below the thrust candle, depending on uh, where the bottom of, uh, of the of the candle is. Say the candle would start here, that is too close to the breakout level, so I wouldn't put it below here. Um, but then you can always put it below the last swing uh, low. Uh, so this is a pretty good looking market if you're long arb i would not um think that is weird at all do be aware that not now that it has it has broke broken out of these highs it has to stay above it if it starts closing below it's time to get a uh, time to get cautious um uh, arc arc i don't know what the fuck this is arc m um looks pretty good as well for a continuation trade because you have this huge candle here right which closes above here even closes above the highs here so i think this is a very important candle uh could you buy the last high pre-breakout yes but again you got to be careful because structure is building up right uh, this structure here, meaning all these bottoms here could potentially turn into uh, resistance once you are filled on this trade. So you're filled here, price goes up, but then moves into previous support, which is now potentially resistance. That is again why I always prefer to see aggressive price action moving into your price level, into your bids, and then being able to move back up because there is no support forming which could potentially turn into new resistance. So over here, say this market still looked pretty good. Now that we now that we keep going on sideways, keep um, consolidating, uh, I will not have this order in this market any longer, simply because of the fact that there's way better opportunities. 
Um, AR. Atom. Atom is kind of the same. Kind of the same. Uh, I liked this level here. Because it is both... Uh, because it... I like Jesus Christ, I like this candle here, sorry, because it closed through the highs here. And this high is important because it is the uh, new resistance as it was support over here. So this is the first candle that actually flips uh, the SR level and it is now retesting it as support. The only reason I dislike this trade is because, uh, well, for starters... Uh, this four hour candle, right? This last one here isn't a thrust candle that closes all the way through this high, which is why I don't like it. Uh, you could potentially bid this level because this candle here closes through all these highs. Um, but I don't think this is a, uh, a, a thrust candle that closes through uh, significant highs. And you get the shooting star here on the four hour, which is bearish. And you get the shooting star on the daily which is also bearish even if this manages to close back above this this level here it's still a shooting star and i don't see this reversing all the way back down uh, back up here uh so all in all i don't like this um i don't like the way this looks um i wasn't filled yet because i am actually bidding this level here but i'm i don't really like this trade so i'll probably move on and cancel this uh this order meaning it will probably do this. But such is life, right? Such is life. Uh, moving on, moving on. We have AVAX. Most charts look the same. Most charts really look the same. Um, right, so this is, uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, axes, uh, axes, axes, I don't know, AXS. Uh, again, same thing. You got the uh, rectangle. We got the breakout first time here, then rejects, comes back below. Then we have the second breakout, uh, which is a confirmed breakout to me because it closed above 570, which is 3% above the 552.9 uh, level, which to me is the top of the rectangle. Um, so being along this market makes sense to me. And again, playing it to the uh, target, which is the... Um, which is the uh, uh, rectangle size. Um, uh, as a target, you could potentially say, look, I want to be a seller at this level because this level makes a lot more sense, and it does, so you could sell most of your uh, position here. And the reason I say most of it is because you're trading the rectangle, right? So if you play the rect... The rectangle isn't just a pattern. The rectangle is a pattern which has a certain take-profit target, which has a certain way to place your stops, which has a certain way to trill your stops etc it's not just a rectangle it's not just just one pattern it's it's a it's a it's a it's a concept a trading concept a a, a plan that comes with it uh, so i would sell most of my position here and probably keep a small position uh, running uh, up until that level uh, so that is axis i'm gonna mark this out real quick um the beauty of, of crypto is that it, 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 it correlates so much so that uh, so many charts look alike. Uh, Binance Coin, I've been over this a thousand of times, uh, so I'll just do this quickly. All these highs here, again, major, major, major resistance uh, finally closes, th closes through uh, and now is testing it as support. Uh, but this is a whole lot of nothing. It's it's not bearish. It's not bullish. It's just indecision, right? You got small candle bodies with big wicks both ways. A lot of selling, a lot of buying. Not much is happening. Uh, I am long this market. Pretty volatile as well. Uh, ATR is exceeding uh, is exceeded uh, pretty much every day. Um, but yeah, I'm still in this. Um, indecision i don't like indecision i want to be right on a trade pretty quickly but i don't have a a an exact a specific time in which i have to be right what usually happens is if there's indecision and i think right i may as well close this trade then it goes uh, like this and if i die if i decide to stay in the trade it'll do that so either way i'm fucked so i'll just uh, i'll just stick to the trade for now um um, 
if we do uh, decide to go up, I don't see a reason for us not to take out this high here. And if we get a decisive break above 700 on the daily, uh, targets are way, way up, way up. Um, CRV just posted this on Twitter as well. This is one of the many, many rectangles that you could be trading. Exact same thing. Uh, bottoming structure starts uh, forming in June. You get the rectangle, right? Um, again, not every high or every low has to hit the uh, boundaries of the rectangle. You just need a certain amount of them to hit, right? So we get four at the bottom and we get three at the top. That is that is more than enough for me to say this is a rectangle. You can go and say, um, you can go and say, uh, look, um, let me fucking look for an hour. You can go and say, all right, this is a rectangle. Right, you can, you can, yeah. You can go look. It's been it's been at the top once and at the bottom once. So now this is a rectangle. Uh, I want to see at least five hits. So either three at the bottom and two at the top, or uh, the other way around. You can have four at the bottom and one at the top. That makes no sense as well. Uh, but this is a rectangle. Again, if this breaks out three percent above the upper boundary, uh, I am longing this market. Same exact thing. This would be a uh, this would be a very important level to watch. This is the actual. Um, let me just go ahead and confirm that real, real quick. Uh, the actual target of the, uh, the actual target will be quite a little bit higher, sorry. Uh, but this level is just way more obvious, right? The, it's way more obvious this would be resistance and not some arbitrary level here, which would be the actual target of the, of the rectangle. But I'd rather play it a little safe. A little more safe and, and have this as a target but this would be a very obvious level to watch and fta as uh tom dante likes to call it uh first trouble area uh which is some th something to uh keep in mind uh dog nothing dot nothing um drift i don't know what this is but this is a very clear level which will probably uh, catch a bid uh i'm not not going to be the one to buy this but it's um you could play it uh, dime, uh, is this a uh, rectangle? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, so yeah, exact same playbook. I would be careful for this high here, which is also a, uh, a kind of a support resistance level, a flip, if you will, um, which could really, really be a potential uh, resistance. Uh, so even if you get the breakout, I would be wary of this level. I wouldn't close it per se, uh, and I may even add to the trade if it if it manages to close uh, above and then get the get the retest. But the actual target for my rectangle uh, would be uh, would be this, which also coincides, which has confluence with a uh, a very uh, a good resistance level, uh, support resistance level as well. Uh, so yeah, that's that is how how I would play uh, dime. So up, breakdown, potential retest or not, doesn't really matter. Uh, probably resistance here, break out of it hopefully, and then buy the retest to add to the trade and then sell at uh, 345. So that is, that is uh, DYM dimension. Eigenlayer, I thought this was, this was going to change uh, uh, the future, but it's not doing anything. DNA looks really good. Looks really good for more upside. Just finding uh, finding acceptance above this uh, level here. ENS uh, ETH classic, perfect example again. Very nice rectangle. Out of it, didn't get the perfect retest. So you would have been better off buying this confirmed breakout here. Uh, blast straight through this area here which here which is a very big level as well uh if you're in this trade look it looks really good the only problem is uh i'm not sure what this is here the only issue is this uh candle over here right now it's a, a clear shooting star which is a bearish bearish candle um if you're lucky and if you're in this trade you get a retest of this high here um, and then we go back up, right? That could happen. Um, 
you could have your stop below this thrust candle, but the thrust candle is so big that you're going to be uh, giving back way too much of your profit. Um, so you could potentially have it below uh, this thrust candle. But again, it's um, it's not great. That is the downside of vertical price action. You can't really, can really have a good stop unless you, of course, use the, uh, the ATR-based stop loss. Um, which in this case would be uh, uh, here. You would mark this here today, right? So you're at 23.97. So you don't want price to go below 23.97. Tomorrow, the ATR will be different, uh, will be uh, slightly higher. So then you move your stop up accordingly. So that is ETH Classic, Ethereum's retarded little brother. Then we have ETH Phi. Exactly the same thing. I'm not going to keep repeating myself. Uh, maybe for the last time, breakout, buy, target 275. If you want to buy in trenches, you can. You can buy the uh, breakout, then also buy the potential retest, and then target this. Um, just let me say this one more time. This is a very reliable chart pattern. Um, so you really, it really pays to uh, look at these patterns, set your alerts, and uh, trade them accordingly. Files, same thing. Mm, Phantom, uh, um, no. FXS, same thing. Rectangle bottom. Gala, I like this level. Just a simple, clear level. Support resistance flip. I can see us pushing through this, retesting the level, and then trading way higher, uh, potentially targeting these highs here, which is a pretty big move. Uh, it's a 66% move. Markets are un un unforgiving, right, guys? Remember, uh, not just in the negative, well, not just in the um, in the bloodbath way kind of thing. Uh, they're also relentless in keeping you sidelined. Um, I mean, look at XRP, right? I, I'm long. Uh, I was long XRP. I bought the uh, the uh, breakout out of the triangle, uh, but this level here, this candle. This daily candle was a confirmed breakout and it just leaves you sidelined right just day after day it just keeps going up and up and up and then people think well it's been going up for so long and so aggressively i'm going to wait for an aggressive pullback and potentially buy the retest of the symmetrical triangle you're probably not going to get it uh if you want to if you want to get into xrp i think your best bet is to uh, by this uh, retest, the retest, retest of the high here. Um, but oftentimes people will just keep buying and bidding the uh, short-term moving averages, and it just keep, it'll just keep uh, keep you sidelined, which is pretty uh, pretty shitty. Which is why you're often better off trading, um, better off trading uh, confirmed breakouts. Um, let me check. Where were we? Where were we? Gala, GMT, just just important levels. Uh, I uh, I marked nothing spectacular. Downward trending channel, grass. I don't know what this is. Age bar, ICP, future of finance. Not doing fucking any, fucking anything. Uh, this is also an important level, really big resist support resistance flip, right? You see this on ETH, you see this on uh, Lido. We'll go over this. Uh, on, uh, we'll go over Lido in a second. Uh, if this does break, I think it is a uh, an obvious trade and a, a trade you should take. Very clear invalidation, very clear levels. It's just so clear. Just look for clarity. Don't look for fucking minor wicks here and there. Just look at the bigger or the, the especially if you're new to trading. Go on a higher time frame, check the daily, check the weekly. Does it look structured? Does it look neat? Does it look up? Does it look obvious? Fucking out of breath. Oh my god. Uh, and trade those. Trade those. ID, same thing. Uh, I'm also long injective still because uh, we broke out of the um, uh, downward channel. We got the highs here. So I've been long since the breakdown looking to add to this trade uh the same way i want i i want to add to solana so we need a clear decisive breakout and then i'm looking to add to this position but uh this is the level to break this is uh, an important level 
all in all this chart looks good there's no reason for me to, clo to close this uh, this trade um my stop is uh, below below these lows here just the obvious levels just the really obvious uh, obvious levels guys um it's uh, trading is really complex trading is really hard so don't make it harder harder than it should be this this looked good uh, a few days ago uh, it doesn't to me anymore because we have too much structure here at the lows if i get filled uh, uh, at this level here i just risk it this being uh, resistance so uh, there is no order for me currently in this market um, but it is one um, it is just something it is a pattern to um, to um, keep in mind and to easily recognize right so you have all the highs here then you have the clear breakout you bit the last high pre-break out could be these highs could be this high it depends on how you play this and you have the high, you have the stop uh, below the thrust candle uh jupiter is it jupiter i don't even know if it's jupiter i don't fucking yup uh, nothing special can't see nothing special lie yeah so lido same thing this really looks like the eth chart just that this hasn't broken out yet if this breaks out it's a very obvious play just take the trade just take the trade man that is all you have to do that is what trading is you're a you're a glorified um order placer and you're a glorified signal taker take the signal it is a signal take it just take it every single time take it take it take it yes but yes but warren buffett said yes but uh basil sold his uh, amazon stock yeah i know just trade the fucking signal just do it okay if you have a proven um system that is profitable you have to take the signals every single time that is what you have to do you place the order and you take the signals even if you have two losses three losses four losses eight losses in a row if you know your system is profitable you take the signals don't start doubting yourself don't think oh my god but i've taken four losses maybe i should stop taking signals maybe i should uh trade a different system no 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 no, no. the only reason to trade a different system is if on a long enough time frame your si your system and your system is um um object ob objectively definable is that a word i mean i don't know if you can define your system in a long and on a long enough time frame it's not profitable change it if your system is profitable and that should mean at least i don't know 50 to 100 trades with a specific system with specific rules if it's profitable don't 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 change it don't change it so yeah take the trade take the signal right this is it uh lever lever link uh litecoin so yeah litecoin uh moving up that is usually a sign of uh, bad things to come which is usually the case was usually the case in previous during previous cycles uh, I'm not one to take my signals from previous cycles. Uh, I am also long Litecoin. I think this high, these highs here were significant. I think this level here is significant. And I think this candle here broke through all of it, which is important. And this is the last high pre break out. Uh, so that is the level I bid. Uh, so I'm currently long Litecoin. I do need to see quick acceptance back above this level here uh, because if it doesn't and if it starts accepting below um, this could be potentially a fake out and this could now be uh, resistance yet again so that is not something I want to see uh, the plus side is this isn't a bearish candle it's not a um, it's not a shooting star like on ethereum classic you can see the clear difference right this big wick means major major rejection uh, litecoin is not the same so i am still along this market and we'll see what happens on a bigger time frame this is also a rectangle to me um uh, like so if this manages to break out out of 118 i think we should target 229 which is a big trade and something to look forward to uh, magic same thing um rectangle max merle maker i don't know this isn't this isn't really interesting near 
kind of the same thing, right? Breaking out of a level. It's not great. It's just, it's just, it's meh. It's meh. It's meh. Uh, Omni. I don't even know what this is again, but again, this is a very obvious level. If it manages to close above here, I think that is a signal to take. Well, holy shit. I don't know what this is either, but it looks really nice. If you're in it, congratulations. You caught a 32% move in one day. Um, this would be a, uh, this would be a nice, a nice example of what it would look like if a major support resistance level is flipped, right? Um, so this is, this is Ondo and this is Omni, right? You can see these are support levels. This is resistance. It flipped, it flipped support into resistance. Uh, now you want to see it go back above. That is exactly what happened with Ondo. You have resistance, you have, uh, you have support, sorry. You have resistance, resistance, breaks out of it, tests it as support, and it is accepted as support, and then starts moving up. That is a trade you want to be in, and that is a trade you want to add to, just like you want to add to the Solana trade. You want to see a clear breakout, then retest, and then buy this. This isn't a clear thrust candle through this level, so if I were in this trade, I wouldn't add to this trade here. Um, but still, this looks very good. You have a clear invalidation level um so yeah this this just looks good if i were in this trade on the retest here i would move my stop up to this thrust candle here i want i don't want to see it go down all the way back there Oof, man i'm plowing through these charts huh uh let me see what else we got let me see what else we got render same thing you know support levels resistance levels breaking through it Finding acceptance and now hopefully start trending up. Uh, I would be interested in this market if we manage to close above here. So we'll see. Um, would I take all the signals of all the charts? Absolutely not. It just it just depends when you get the signal and uh, which markets look best at the time. Send a perfect exa example as well of the uh, re rectangle that breaks out. Uh, but this would be an example of a, a breakout that is so aggressive, you just get no entry, right? I mean, this is <laughs> this is what happens in crypto. Uh, this is the rectangle, and this would be your target. I, I mean, look, in, in, in a single daily candle, it nearly reaches target. So I obviously wouldn't buy this just for a fucking half percent of a move. That makes no sense. Um, so now I just wait for other uh, other charts to break out. I won't buy a, uh, a retest of this. Probably, maybe I will, but probably won't. Uh, so we'll see. It's just a good example of what can happen, and that the same pattern doesn't always play out the same way. Uh, say, yeah, you know, meh, breaks out of an important level, starts trading back uh, below it immediately. Uh, you could see this as a uh, inverse head and shoulder, uh, which is now breaking out uh, or has broken out here. Uh, but you want to see this uh, back up pretty pretty quickly. Uh, SNX, same story, same story. Everything, everything is just the same, man. It's just a fucking clone. Sui, very nice chart. Sun, Sushi, Sin, all nothing, all nothing, meaningless. Uh, theta, theta, I don't know. Support resistance flip would be nice. Tia, rectangle, waiting for the breakdown. Uh, tensor, support resistance flip would be nice. I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting. I am long multiple markets, but these are just the opportunities I want to show you. Wu, same thing, clearly support here. Uh, so we want to see this break out and test it as support again to get the confirmation of the flip. Uh, so yeah, that is it. That is it for this. Uh, that is it for this, uh, guys. Uh, let's move on to, let's move on to um, uh, meme coin trading. Let's move on to meme coin trading with first a quick trader talk. Right, so I just noticed my uh, webcam is really uh, blurry. I don't know why, should be okay now. But uh, yeah, not, not that you were looking at my face, but the uh, blurry screen at the bottom of the screen can be uh, 
pretty annoying so i apologize for that i have no idea fucking autofocus it should focus on me but apparently it, just, it decided to focus on uh, something uh something else anyway meme coin trading and uh crypto trading and trader talk so last thursday i was asked should i trade crypto do you trade crypto and why do you trade crypto aren't you like a serious trader yes that was a little condescending but that was the uh that was the question asked um so this is a little tongue-in-cheek obviously i don't discriminate against um uh certain assets um so it's not actual discrimination if you're not trading certain assets but just for the lack of a better term i don't discriminate against certain assets if there's volatility if there's uh money to be made i just trade it there's this saying in trading do you want to be right or do you want to make money people generally want to be right they want to be able to say i was right i don't care about being right i just want to make money that is why i post charts on twitter that uh, end up not being winners that is why i consider and tell you my win rate is between 40 and 45 percent which is very very normal for traders to have people telling you their win rate is 90 percent or 95 percent or 100 percent are fucking lying it is just it is just a lie it is 100 percent guaranteed a lie so yeah but that's all right you know um so i just want to make money and uh there's a lot of money to be made in in crypto right now a few months ago that was not the case so then i wasn't trading um crypto then i'll trade forex i'll trade something else it doesn't matter uh, i trade charts i trade price and it doesn't matter um what asset it is so and now would you trade memes i think i categorize categorize memes uh diff in different ways there's the actual garbage the actual shit coins right the the low liquidity junk that just goes to zero really quickly when i say most of those meme coins trade to zero i i don't mean i don't mean 60 percent or 70 percent. i mean as close to a hundred percent as you can get without it being actually a hundred percent um almost almost none of those coins do anything more than go to zero if you go to pump.fun for instance that is where a lot of people like to gamble uh there's i think about a hundred new coins per minute per minute not per day not per week per minute every single minute like a ton of these coins are coming out there's no liquidity there, there's no trades nothing this is on solana and that is nice because solana has very low trading fees very low uh trading transaction fees sorry not trading fees transaction fees so a lot of people get to spend like five dollars on these coins ten dollar ten dollars on these coins without having to pay 50 or 40 dollar or 100 dollars on on transaction fees fees like is the case uh with ether so people are gambling the fuck out of those coins which is okay i mean you do you uh i mean earlier this week this guy who trades uh peanut which is this coin right here which is a good short in my opinion um he bought peanut he spent 17 dollars and he made 2.9 million now that is survivorship bias again almost nobody does this they're the i'm not sure if I, I don't know i'm not sure if you're better off buying lottery tickets or and winning the lottery or buying this but this this is just more fun so people do this but don't think you're going to be making millions but it is, it is fun it is fun to buy a a, a shit coin every now and then and see what it does uh, but do not think you should hold on to this these coins i mean they either go fast or they don't go uh, at anywhere at all uh so cut them quick and uh yeah all right guys we're back with the poof wardrobe change uh something came up right between or right in the middle of the stream so i had to uh i had to uh, get out and uh do something else anyway we're back uh so i'm uh, rewinding the clock a little bit uh i went over one or two meme coins already but I'm just gonna go back real quick and uh, start over just so I can get into the mood again right or something uh, anyway so uh, yeah this is the category category of memes that is uh, entirely different from the one we discussed earlier which is the uh, category that is uh, 
uh, that has high liquidity, uh, higher market caps, anywhere, I don't know all these coins, but I would guess anywhere in between uh, 100 million up to 3 billion, uh, as opposed to the absolute shit coins that have like 50k uh, market cap and zero liquidity. Uh, these are just these are just entirely different and these are worth your time these are worth trading these can be traded with size um, oftentimes it, it happens that um well not often but sometimes people will uh, gloat on um, Twitter they have like uh, they have an unrealized unrealized profit of like millions right of this uh, random coin and then you look at the liquidity of the of the market and it has like 20k liquidity meaning uh, it's all really nice to uh, see millions on your screen but i don't have to tell you that you will not be able to sell it for all those millions um in fact you will have about 20k to sell and when doing so you will nuke the coin to zero so uh yeah this this won't happen with uh, these coins and that is why I have them listed here. Uh, not all of them are as good because not all of them are as old. Some of these coins are uh, fairly new. But um, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look at a few. Uh, this is Bohm. I have no idea what Bohm is. I don't care what Bohm is. I don't know what cartoon goes with this. All I know is the chart looks good. Uh, and that is pretty much all I care about. Uh, even with meme coins, you can go and um, chart classical patterns. This uh, could potentially be an inverse head and shoulders, meaning that if it breaks through this level here, it will be broken out of the neckline, which is bullish. Then my conservative target would be right over here um with the potential target of this high up here um with the head and shoulders with the inverse head and shoulders most of the time meaning more than 50 percent of the time you will get an actual retest of the neckline um so what i do in this case especially with crypto i've told you this a hundred hundred times already uh, crypto does tend to squeeze really hard um leaving you sidelined so what i do is i usually enter for 50 percent once we've broken out of the structure and then i will add another 50 percent at the retest of the neckline uh, and trade it uh, trade it up there so that is boom boomy i have no idea uh, then we have bunk bunk is uh bunk is nice there's this guy on twitter right now not sure what his name is, but everyone's uh, posting uh, Bunk Guy was right. Uh, I really like seeing stuff like this uh, on the timeline. It's a, uh, it's a guy who believes in something. He positions accordingly. Uh, so he did the, anal uh, the, uh, the analysis and he does the trading. What you see happen more often, often uh, than not is, is or are people who are good at uh, analyzing but suck at trading and in my experience uh traders actual traders are much better much more competent at uh, analysis than actual um analysts are so uh and traders can actually trade the markets because many people just analyze markets right you can pretty easily analyze markets look at a chart say i think this is going to go up i think this is going to go down i think this will probably continue uh, sideways but actually trading the markets you analyze is a it's a way different game it's way different uh why you ask because if you're analyzing the chart and you say look i will be a buyer at this level you can just trade it right it's really that simple the problem is the psychology that occurs or the psychology plays a huge part once you enter a trade once you are enter once you are in a trade uh, and you have your balls on the line you have your money on the line things change really fast um which is a really really big difference with uh just analyzing uh, markets once you have skin in the game things change drastically uh, in any case bunk looks uh, really good 
uh, for two reasons. One, look at this weekly candle, right? It just pops right out. Uh, this is the ascending triangle, which is a bullish chart pattern, especially <laughs> given we have just fucking launched all the way up. Um, this is most likely a bull flag, uh, consolidation before expansion, um, a, an ascending triangle uh, that will lead to continuation, which is what I'm guessing. Of course, we can just do this next week. That is always a possibility, uh, but I don't, I don't think that will happen. Um, so what I do is um, I take this level right here, because I think this is the upper range of the, uh, of the ascending triangle. Then I add 3% to this level, which is this level here. Once we get a daily close above this level, that is a confirmed breakout out of the ascending triangle, which is uh, bullish, which is good, which is a confirmed breakout. Right now we have uh, an hour and a half left on, left on this day, in this day. This is not a convincing breakout. Uh, will I trade it? Probably not. Probably not. Um, I will probably look to enter on a retest of this level um, and see price action develop along uh, uh, the um, along the day or along the week uh, tomorrow or, um, or or next week. See what we get. Uh, but this isn't convincing enough. Theoretically or technically, it does close above the confirmed breakout level. Um, so, yeah, I think I think I'll actually trade it. I think I actually traded. The reason I don't like this uh, candle is because it's a pretty big rejection. I would not consider this a shooting star yet. Uh, if we go down and we get the candle body over here, it would. But right now. We have a wick that is too long at the bottom for it to be a shooting star. Uh, in my opinion, of course, uh, this changes among traders, but I wouldn't consider this to be a shooting star. Um, so right now, I'll probably enter. I'll probably enter with a, with a pretty tight stop loss. Uh, normally, I would enter this, tr this, uh, this trade and probably have my stop here um, below that low. Uh, potentially, potentially have it here because uh, you just don't want to see trade back all the way down there. Um, yeah, I probably have this low over here. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens within uh, within the next hour and a half. So that is uh, that is bunk, 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 bunk. We got Brett. Brett, same story, kind of. Uh, this could have been, uh, and I'm just looking at this chart now for the first time, so I'm doing this kind of on the spot. Uh, you could say this is the uh, inverse head and shoulders continuation, um, inverse head and shoulders, or a uh, bottoming inverse head and shoulders. Uh, but then we get the fill, right? Because the reason it fills, fuck, I removed the line again. The reason it fails is because if it's a continuation inverse head and shoulders you want to see you guessed it continuation which we don't get and the pattern is invalidated simply because of the fact it moved lower than the right shoulder in this case so this pattern would have been invalidated but it would would have been uh pretty good uh, to have seen this here and then traded this is a perfect example of why good trades can turn into losers. Anyone who would have taken this trade with uh, the uh, theory that this is a inverse head and shoulders, you trade the breakout candle, but then the pattern is invalidated. So it's a, it's a good trade, but it just did not work out. However, price trades back up uh, and then closes through the these highs over here, right? which are important, and we get this candle, this one right here. That is an important breakout, that is, that is a confirmed breakout. Uh, I wasn't in this trade, I didn't trade this, didn't see it at the time, but this would have been a, a very good, uh, good trade. Target would have been here, uh, so this high here, and uh, target would have been hit 
will i trade the retest of this level no because it has been retested already and i prefer trading naked levels uh, which this is not then we have cat cat i am uh, long this market uh, really really straightforward we have these highs right uh, chart breaks out i am long this market uh, to see if we can get some um, price discovery going my stop is right below this thrust candle here so we'll see what um what the market gods are um what the markets market gods have in store for us very new coin uh pretty fresh chart not a lot of history but this is uh this is good this is good we got dgen i don't know what dgen is i don't know any of these coins really uh except some of them dgen this is maybe this may be a an interesting level i have no orders in this market uh, it's not a naked level uh this is just if you are in this in this uh trade if you're in this market if you're if you are a spot owner of this coin i would not want to see it close below this level doge was a monster trade uh, last week uh, really 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 good trade um, didn't get to add to it unfortunately but you know can't win them all uh, didn't reach target all the way but I did close it here manually and first target was reached here um, doge is a market that is interesting probably has a lot of buyers waiting and wanting to get in uh, so we're probably not going to get the um, the correction, the pullback that everybody wants. I would personally really like to step in and buy this level here, 28.888 on Binance. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. I really like this level a lot. Uh, simple fact, it's, a, it's an obvious swing high, obvious previous resistance. Uh, and it is a naked level. Uh, you could say this is a naked level two, at least on the weekly. Let's have a look at the daily. On the daily, it is as well. The thing is, though, this is one of those examples where when the pullback is just too much, too severe, too aggressive, uh, you're going to start doubting if we're still in an uptrend. Um, I told you already uh, when I went over the Bitcoin chart, but this isn't really structure right this is just almost vertical price action especially from here so this is really inefficient when there's no when there's no structure building when there's no uh, potential support potential resistance to work with uh, this becomes very inefficient price action which means it can really nuke down pretty aggressively um but again going back all the way down here I don't know it, it wouldn't really break bullish market structure per se uh, but I would not want to see this happen at least I mean I, I don't mind seeing it happen it, that would be a 60% correction I wouldn't mind it per se I wouldn't become bearish per se I wouldn't start crying maybe a little but not necessarily uh, it just means I'm not gonna blind uh, blindly buy this level I will buy this level blindly uh, blind blindly I don't fucking know like give me some slack uh, but this level here too low for my taste too low Floki looking really good really strong market as well I think it was this was listed on uh, Coinbase so this is one of those times where um, I don't trade fundamentals um, just straight out out of the box um, in a kind of way meaning that if I heard um, floki was listed on coinbase i'm just gonna go balls deep floki that would be a a fundamental kind of trade right thinking that is fundamentally bullish so i just want to be long this market that is not what i do uh, but i will keep this in mind i will keep in mind one of the biggest exchanges in the world listed this uh as a spot market which is a big difference with perps market futures markets uh, futures markets you don't have to have a um, you don't have to have a uh, um, uh, you don't have to own Floki uh, in your treasury uh, you're just trading contracts uh, so you can just list anything right but once a uh, an exchange lists a spot market 
um, they're going to be pretty big buyers themselves because they have to um, make the actual market. So that is fundamentally more important than uh, listing uh, a futures um, ex a futures pair. Uh, so I'm keeping that in mind with uh, with Floki, but I would like to see this break out of this uh, range. If it does, um, targets are way up there. Could potentially uh, buy any of these highs here, but for now I am uh, not interested until it breaks out. Uh, Foxy, very, very strong market. Don't know this coin either. Uh, looks very good. Uh, if it breaks out of this high, closes through these highs here, that would be bullish. And I don't see a reason why we will not take out these highs here, which is a pretty significant move as well. That is a uh, almost a 70% move, which is, uh, which is very nice. The only thing I would be uh, wary of is this wick here and potentially this, uh, potentially this, uh, these lows over there. Uh, that could turn into uh, pretty quick resistance, anywhere between 7 and 18%. Uh, but I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think this coin is too young, too volatile. So maybe we'll get something like this, slight rejection, or maybe slightly higher, and then just take out. I think that'll be a pretty quick move uh, to, uh, to all-time highs and possibly beyond. Uh, people are speculating now which new meme coin is going to get listed on Binance or Coinbase. So a lot of these, a lot of these meme coins have a lot of demand. Um, Jesus Christ, Frog. That's a pretty, pretty big uh, handle. No, it's not not too big. Seventeen percent. Uh, this looks like absolutely nothing. I will not buy this coin whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> bless you buddy thank you very much then we have goat um anyone who got into this early congratulations congratulations that is a uh, good good trade i am not interested in this market maneki i will be a buyer at this level uh this level still looks good once we get too much uh price action going on here i will cut the order because then we are just risking a breakdown from this consolidation level, uh, meaning this will turn into new resistance once you get filled on this level. Uh, that is not worth it. That is not worth it. Uh, Mew, not interested in this market. This, this is just trading up. This, this is one of those coins, those older meme coins, right? From like a year ago or so, I think. Uh, maybe even longer, I don't know, man. Time, just, time, is, time is a flat circle in crypto. Um, but this just, this is just, this just keeps going up, right? People forget this and then it just keeps going on. Uh, Mog, not interested in this market. Uh, Mudang, not interested in Mother, none. Uh, Myro, I am along this market. Um, because it broke out of a important level. Uh, this swing high over here. Got a really big, nice thrust candle. Uh, so I got long after the after the uh, daily close. Uh, stop is below this thrust candle, which is really, really, it's a big, a wide stop. I don't really like that. A 27% stop. But my target is, uh, is uh, uh, up here. So the R is still almost 5, which is, uh, which is good, which is good. So uh, upside is, the, the upside I'm targeting is 135%. So having a stop, a wide stop of 27% is pretty, pretty damn wide, but it's it's okay. It doesn't really matter. Um, of course, you could say, look, why don't you put your stop below this little thrust candle here, uh, meaning your R would change to fucking 18, uh, which you see on Twitter all the time. Look, guys, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta understand this, right? Actual traders don't have trades like this and you see this on on uh social media all the freaking time this is a lie straight up this is a fucking lie anybody who posts a chart like this is either retardant or is lying to you right and it's probably the uh, the latter or a combination of both this is just really you just take a random chart or a chart that that goes up like this right 
and then they just do look i got in uh, into this trade uh here uh and then i put my stop uh, below here and i targeted this high here there we go and they and then you post this this on twitter and you go look at this amazing trade r22 r that the greatest nobody does this man nobody fucking does this makes no sense nobody has a stop that fucking tight uh, with a with a target that wide uh you could you could potentially but if you do you got to you got to um give that or add that as a disclaimer you could have some crazy degen account right where you just trade a thousand x leverage um where your stop is super 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 tight and you're just hoping for instant continuation then you could potentially have a trade like that but that is to me that is that is more uh gambling and less trading because you're hoping and thinking actually thinking or uh, praying even that um that price won't go half a percent against you which almost never ever 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 happens uh, so I don't think anyone actually trades like that and they just add that uh, graphic after the fact. Um, uh, sorry, Myro. So I'm long this market. Simple reason I just uh, explained to you. Uh, this is just uh, consolidating right now. Uh, I will be adding to this trade once we, if we break out of this level, out of this uh, structure. Uh, so I want to see price move up here and then add around this level, move price, uh, have price move up and then add around this level um, and then target target uh, this level here. This will be a level to watch as well. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we get. That is all we can do sometimes, guys. Just pray and um, hope for the best. Nero, Nilo, Nilo, Neiro, I don't know. Also some Japanese dog. Symmetrical triangle, possibly. See uh see what happens. See what happens. People not interested in this market. Pepe interested in this market for sure. Um this too is uh is moving up aggressively. Uh was gonna say possible uh, ascending triangle, but it isn't. Uh, not according to me, it isn't. Um, there's just not enough equal highs here. Uh, but there is this important swing high over here, which is important to me. This thrust breaks through it very, very clearly. So I want to be a buyer at the last high pre-breakout, which is uh, the uh, uh, level marked in blue. Um, I will be watching price uh, over here or a possible sweep, a quick sweep. Um, because right now this is building, this is uh, quite a lot of structure, quite a lot of consolidation. Uh, and as you know, if I get filled here or here, uh, this could potentially be new resistance. So I'll just um, have a shitty trade on. Uh, so I want to see this resolve, get resolved pretty quickly now. This is taking too long. Um, but if not, and it is always plan B, if uh, if we don't get the sweep, if we don't get the move down here, I'll just look too long a uh, potential break out of this structure, uh, out of this possible symmetrical triangle, which could kind of work, which could kind of work, kind of makes sense as well. Uh, we'll see if we get it. We'll see if we get it. Let me just add a um, a. Um, an alert uh, even if we break out of this symmetrical triangle i still want to break it at least the halfway point the horizontal halfway point right that is what i want to see at least happen uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be long this market just because it breaks out on the hourly um out of this triangle here that makes no sense right because it can just do this quite easily but if it breaks both out of the triangle and out of this horizontal that will be um that will be good to go Oh my god. Right, so we have peanut. Um insane. <laughs> In hell. God damn. Uh this market is just consolidating. Um I don't know if I mentioned this already, but if I did, well then you'll just have to listen to it again. Fucking sue me. Uh, I saw the saw this guy bought this for 17 bucks, probably over here. 
and sold it for I think 2.9 million probably over here fucking asshole no I'm I'm happy for him I'm very very happy for him I don't know the guy but he's probably very happy and probably spending his money um very wisely not buying bigger bags of bigger shit coins uh but yeah I'm, I'm not interesting not interested in this market uh pretty big rejection candles uh if market uh if markets if market conditions were a little different a little more bearish this would have been a short to me if we were able to get down below these uh, lows here um but right now i'm not shorting anything i'm not standing in front of a moving train not stepping in front of a moving train sorry we got punky uh well all-time high if it breaks out of that then then we have some nice price discovery going which is always worth having a look at popcat fucking hate popcat just because i tried getting into this trade so many freaking times and i got tried tried getting in here tried getting in here didn't get it didn't get it again um so yeah no i'm still not in popcat so uh good for you if you're still in this this is just gonna trend up uh I don't know, man, until probably five bucks or something. Maybe now, maybe even higher. This will probably test the upper bound of this uh, channel. Uh, so, yeah, good for you, man. Congratulations. Then we got Shiba, Shiba Inu. This is like fucking three billion market cap, something ridiculous. Uh, this market is looking good. Uh, again, same thing, man. I've, I'm fucking repeating myself over and over again. It's like I can only say like three different things uh it's like i'm a female but uh no offense anyway we get the um we get the um, uh consolidation here meaning too much structure too many lows uh aka possible new resistance once you get filled here so we'll have to see if i keep this order in right now i do have the order in could come in here could come in here uh so yeah let's see let's see what happens Slurf, slurf, slurf. Not interested in this market. Kind of the same structure as Brett, uh, I think it was, right? Yeah, we got the uh, inverse head and shoulders. Then we get the breakout. Super happy. And then we get the breakdown again. This chart pattern is not invalidated, uh, seeing as it didn't go lower than the uh, right shoulder. But if you're sticking to this trade up until here, I don't know, I man, you could do that. I know people who trade classical chart patterns and use the shoulder low or high um, as the uh, as the stop loss uh, placement, stop loss level. Uh, God damn, I'm allergic to something, man. I don't know to what, to fucking light or something. Jesus. Ah. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not in this, uh, not interested in this. Uh, this would, would have been a very nice level, but it's been retested already. So, um, yeah, I'm not interested. SPX, <laughs> no thanks. No thank you. Sundog, not interested. And Whiff, not interested. Not interested. All right, guys, that is, um, that is it. Uh, yeah, that is, that is all. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking with me till the very very end i appreciate it uh, i would love it if you could leave a comment if you could like this video and of course subscribe i'm wishing you a great week ahead and um happy trading